In the last class, we have looked at the uh, three circuit elements, right? the inductor, resistor, and capacitor. Um, and then we calculated the, um, the impedance, complex impedance of each element. Here is the uh, resistor. So when the R is the resistance, and you can calculate the uh, impedance of the resistor. And the capacitor, if the capacitance is C, then the, also the, it's a function of frequency and the function of the capacitance, the, resist, uh, the impedances. So this can uh, vary depending on the frequency. At low frequency, it will go up to infinite value. So it will make an open circuit. And when a very high frequency, it's going to make the uh, short circuit. So it feels like the, uh, there's nothing and it's just wire. And when you have an inductor, with the inductance L, also you can calculate the uh, complex impedance. And when you see it here, so the C, the capacitor, makes this phase shift by minus 90 degree. So that's why you have a negative sign here and the imaginary component. And the L makes the positive 90 degree shift. Right? So these two will make a, a phase shift. And when you have only the resistor, then there's no phase shift. So the current and the voltage will be in phase. And as soon as you have a capacitance effect and the inductance effect, then you're having the phase shift so that you will have a complex number in the permittivity loss and etc. etc. So today we'll model the soil as a low C dielectric with the resistor and the capacitor. Uh, before that, so when you have the two circuit elements in series, like this, the, the one in the uh, top, then what will be the equivalent impedance? Because it's in series, you can just add up, right? The sum of Z1 and Z2 will be the equivalent impedance of this circuit. And in the parallel case, one over Z1 plus one over Z2 will be the same with the one over Z equivalent. Just like when you uh, calculate the resistor or resistance of the system with the uh, multiple resistor. So from here, uh, from the uh, um, definition of the admittance, admittance is what? Reciprocal of the, this impedance. So you can replace it with Y equivalent. And this will be Y1 plus Y2. Right? Because they are, this is same with the C2, 1 over Z2. So keep in mind this um, parallel and the series analysis, um, we can estimate the uh, electromagnetic property of the soil. So let's say that you have a two metal electrodes in parallel and inside you have a specimen and you want to extract the material property of the soil. So then in the uh, material capacitance, C is what? Epsilon, the, by the definition, epsilon naught times kappa star times A over D. Okay. So here the A is the area of the electrode and D is the distance between the electrode. And then kappa star times C naught. So C naught is what? the capacitance of vacuum or the free space vacuum. And this kappa star is the material property, in this case, the soil's property. Okay? 
So this is module property. So from the capacitance, you can extract the material property of polar, polarizability or permittivity value. And the, from the resistance, so, ah, I was using the purple, material resistance R. So the resistance in this case, we can express it with the uh, geometry value and uh, resistivity. So resistivity times, as the area increases, the resistor decreases. So the uh, A and the distance increases, the resistance, resistance increases. So right? D over A. And also we can express it with the conductivity. And conductivity is, uh, is equal to 1 over rho. So D over A times sigma. And then this sigma is the conductivity of the soil, or the rho is the uh, resistivity of the soil. So this value is the material property. So then, um, so when you have this kind of a circuit, which is soil, and the soil can be represented as the uh, parallel connection of the resistor and the one capacitor, and we want to find out the R and C so that we can extract the kappa, pra, kappa star and the, the sigma value, um, we're going to measure the uh, admittance of this system. Then, admittance. Y star is what? So from this analysis before, because it's in parallel, parallel connection, it's going to be admittance of the resistor plus capacitor, the admittance of the capacitor. Right? So what would be the uh, admittance of the resistor? When you go back, if you go back to this table, the resistor have the admittance of their real value only, the 1 over R. So here is the 1 over R. What about the capacitor contribution? Capacitor is J times omega C. So here, J omega C. This will be the uh, complex admittance of this RNC circuit. So then we can plug uh, these parameters here. Let's do that. So 1 over R is this one. Mm. Here. So then sigma A over D and J omega. And instead of the C, we can uh, replace it with the uh, epsilon not uh, a over d and kappa star instead of kappa star kappa prime minus j kappa double prime right then let's just simplify it take out the a and d that's a geometric function geometric parameter the area and the distance and sigma plus uh, let's group it in real value together and the imaginary value separately. Then group uh, here J and J. Kappa double prime. And what else? Omega epsilon naught. And the imaginary value is J time AD is taken out, so kappa prime omega e naught. Right. 
So here, this is very uh, familiar. It looks familiar, right? It's the same with the effective conductivity. So if we take out the omega epsilon, omega times epsilon and a over d, because these are all constant, then j kappa prime plus kappa double prime sigma and omega e naught. So the, this is effective imaginary permittivity by the definition. So when you measure the admittance of this RC circuit, then the real value will reflect the imaginary effective permittivity and the imaginary value will have the uh, real permittivity, kappa prime. Right? So here we can simplify it. Y star is, mm, and this is what? This is the same with the uh, C, C naught. So omega C naught and kappa effective plus j kappa prime. So if we want to extract the uh, kappa prime, which is the material property, the dielectric constant, or uh, we say the relative permittivity, then we can calculate the, no, sorry, the imaginary part of admittance y star and multiply the d divided by the a and uh, epsilon naught. And what about the effective imaginary permittivity? It's a real value real component of the complex admittance times 1 over omega c naught. Here I think there we should add the omega. Or you can calculate the uh, AC conductivity, the effective um, conductivity, that's real value times T over A. So it's very, uh, so you can calculate the uh, material property when you measure the uh, admittance, right? Or the impedance. Impedance is uh, uh, 1 over y, eh? in this case. So then, how we can calibrate the low frequency measurement? Because uh, always, uh, when you have a system to measure, so you have electronics here. Mm, you have a electron is connected to here. Then the electronics will also add the another component for the uh, capacitor 
and the resistor, capacitance and resistance. That's, uh, that's uh, expressed in here in parallel. And also the wire itself will have the resistance and the inductance too. So that's going to be uh, connected in series. So this is the specimen, soil specimen. And whenever you measure it, you're going to add the system resistance and the system capacitance. So you have to extract, you have to subtract that value to get the real specimen property. So then we can idealize this system with the uh, impedance in series and impedance in parallel. And this is the specimen. So that we want to measure the Z question mark or Z specimen. Then when you measure the impedance, that's going to involve the Z's S, the impedance in series and the impedance in parallel, which is a system uh, error. So Z S plus or the P, 1 over C P plus C specimen. Hmm. One over. One over. Right? So we need to find out this G S and the Z P. And we can measure the Z the measure G sub M. So then we can extract the uh, material property or the impedance of the material correctly. Right? So to do that, we need to do the calibration. The first calibration is with the short circuit. So if we do the short circuit, um, it's like the, we are just connecting the uh, two electrodes together. Then you are eliminating the, this Z specimen. So that's going to be Gs, Cp. And the specimen part is gone so that you have this kind of a circuit. And when you provide the voltage, when you apply the voltage and then it generates the current, how the charge will move? Current will flow mm, bypassing this parallel impedance. So it's going to just flow outside like this. So it will not go through the uh, parallel impedance because, uh, because of the impedance difference. Eh? The current is going this way will be minimal. So the measured impedance will be what? Will be same, very close to the uh, series impedance, Gs. And let's say that this is the impedance of the short circuit. So now we extracted this value, and the second measurement for calibration is the open circuit measurement. In the case, the system will be like Gs, Cp, and you have an open circuit like this. And then the measured impedance will be what well, sum of the impedance in series and impedance in parallel, right? Because uh, here it, the, the current will not flow to this direction, so it will be just the Gs plus Cp, and this is the Z open. So 
the parallel, the ZP, the impedance in parallel will be Z open minus Z S, that's Z open minus Z short. So the finally, we can calculate the uh, impedance of the specimen. That's um, from here. Um, The, spe the impedance of the specimen, so specimen will be uh, a function of the, uh, the measurement, measured impedance, and uh, impedance in the short circuit, and impedance in the on circuit. Right? So by using this equation, you can extract the, uh, the material impedance properly. So what will be the procedure first? So when you have a system with the electrode, parallel electrode at the top and bottom in the uh, kind of k naught cell, then you do the calibration with the open circuit and the short circuit, and you find, uh, you find the parameter or the value for the uh, g short and g open, and add the specimen and you do, you do the measurement and from there you can calculate the impedance of the specimen and w once you have that you can also calculate the what is it uh, admittance right and then from that admittance you can take out the uh, what real permittivity and imaginary permittivity or effective conductivity using these equations these are the procedures for low frequency measurement. So very simple, um, and this only applies to the uh, two electrode system. We're going to compare the two electrode system and the four electrode system together uh, in soon. So actually, the first part of the this slide reviews the material that we covered together uh, in the last class. So chapter thirteen have the uh, circuit element, the explanation of the circuit element, and low frequency measurement and high frequency measurement. So today we're going to cover the, uh, these two sections. And in the last class, we'll do this, this one and uh, this one. Then we are done with the chapter seven, 13. Uh, so we've seen this one before. So in the mechanical wave propagation, depending on the internal scale, if the Lambda is smaller than the, uh, the particle size, you get the refraction and reflection mode conversion. And as the lambda is much larger than the particle size, then it will feel like an equivalent continuum. So you don't have the Brulin, uh, Brulin effect. Right? Uh, so that's going to apply to the uh, electromagnetic wave, same. Mm. So We've seen the voltage and current in Euler form, and we can calculate the um, impedance by dividing the voltage with the current. Admittance is the inverse of the impedance. The resistor, we covered it, right? Uh, charge of flow, and it's a, it dissipates energy, and it doesn't uh, cause the uh, phase shift. And capacitor is a device storing the energy. 
and uh, the unit is the Faraday here. And the basic governing equation is the charge equal to capacitance times the potential difference. So this is the, uh, capacitance, the equa equation to calculate the capacitance for the parallel plate. And this is for the uh, cylindrical capacitor. So you have uh, one electrode outside and the other electrode inside. Inductor, again, you have a coil and inside you have a conductor. Mm. So that the, we have drawn this uh, table for RLC, the impedance and the admittance, and the unit chair here, resistance for ohm, and the conduct conductivity has the uh, selling per meter, inductance has a Henry, permeability is Henry per meter, and capacitance has the unit of Faraday, and the permittivity has the unit of Faraday per meter. Mm. So here, as you see, as you can see, resistor doesn't change, doesn't cause the phase shift. So when you apply the voltage, then the current phase will be in phase with the, vol the voltage. But when you have the capacitor, then it causes the minus 90 degree shift. So you see that there is a, a delay by the um, polar wave quarter wavelengths. And here for inductor has a plus 90 degree phase shift. So that you have a quarter wave also the phase shift. Magnetic po property and uh, low frequency measurement. Yes, here. So we can use the uh, impedance analyzer or the LCI meter to calculate the, uh, to measure the impedance, complex impedance. So complex impedance Z star is what? The real value of the complex impedance is what? Resistance, R. And the imaginary value is the X, reactance. Right? Uh, or you can calculate, you can measure the admittance directly. That's going to be G plus JB, right? the conductance and the susceptance. Uh, and you can also change the frequency. So you can do the frequency sweeping and you can measure the uh, impedance over a range of frequency, depending on the equipment uh, specification. Uh, so the two-terminal electrode measurement is like this. You have a cell that's going to be dielectric material. And generally, we use the uh, acrylic plastic right, or plexiglass. And you have a metal electrode at the bottom and top. And here, you have a soil. And this electrode generates the current to one side and you measure the voltage difference or the potential difference between this and this. Okay? So you have a current uh, high yeah, current electrode, a current port, high current port and low current port and the potential port. So these two generate the current and this and this measure the potential difference. So uh, here, important thing is that this electrode generates the uh, charge flow, and also it accepts the electron. So there is a possibility of the electrode polarization. Um, so if we model the soil with this low C dielectric material with the R and C, then as we derived before, we can calculate the admittance and the, from that the here, I think this, this is the same with it just we just derived in the, the note. And the final form is omega times C naught. So, so here the C naught is the uh, capacitance in vacuum which is given by this uh, geometry, D and A, and uh, J kappa prime plus kappa double prime effective. Okay. So then, from that, 
if we extract the imaginary value, then we get the real permittivity, and from the real, real value, we get the imaginary permittivity. So, let's assume that the soil has the, uh, oh, so let's assume that we have the uh, area of 0.1 square meter electrode, and the distance between the electrode is 5 millimeter. This is a D, and here you have a soil. And the capacitance is measured at the, as the 17.7 pico Faraday, and the permittivity of the material is 50. DC conductivity is 0.01 selenium per meter, and resistance is 5, and there is no um, imaginary effect, uh, imaginary permittivity. There is no loss by the polarization. In that case, we can calculate the uh, y double prime and the y prime with respect to the frequency omega right, using this equation. And as you see, as the frequency increases, the imaginary component of the admittance increases, but the real value stays constant and the permittivity also stays constant, but the effective imaginary permittivity decreases with the uh, omega. Why? Because the, uh, this is, uh, sorry, effective is defined as the kappa double prime plus sigma omega epsilon naught. So as the omega increases, you see that the, uh, this component is zero, so only this component will decreases so that you have a uh, decrease in effective imaginary permittivity. Okay? So this is just a ohmic loss huh? in this case. So then the next one is the uh, uh, exercise, group exercise, or the, you can do this <laughs> with your peers. Let's assume that we have a resistor of 2.2 .2 kilo ohm and the capacitor of 220 nanofaraday, and we are measuring the uh, admittance at frequency 1 kilohertz in the parallel case. And the for series case, with the same resistor R and the capacitor, in this case, calculate the impedance. Uh, give you five minutes.
얼마 나오나요? 음, here. 이것이 진 parallel connection. 유 can start from here, right? The capacitor, oh no, the imaginary part is contributed by the capacitance, and the resistor part contributes the real, real component. So then, one over two two zero zero ohm. Plus J. How much is the omega? One kilohertz. So that's times, and the omega is what? Angular frequency is two pi f, right? So times two pi times. And the capacitance was 220 times 10 to the negative 9 Faraday. So if you calculate that, how much is this one? g e t a n s a n o n i b u n g a j o n a g i o p s o j i w o n 10 to the 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4? Ohm to the minus 1 and plus J and here how much is it? So this is going to be Faraday per second Is this correct? Ship. Okay, then this is Selim, same with Selim, and this is with the ohm, one over ohm, so it's same with Selim. So then, o oh. Selim plus J, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Selim, so. Micro selling plus J plus J. Okay. So this is the same with the what the G, the conductance, and this is same with the B. So that's a uh, uh, susceptance, right? So this is to be G and the B. What about the series connection? So then, in the case of uh, impedance, so we are calculating the impedance, complex impedance. Um, R is going to be just R, and the capacitance part is in imaginary component. So that's minus J one over omega C. Is it correct? Yes. So then, R is going to be just the same, right? Two, two, zero, zero ohm, and minus J, and one over two pi t 
points 10 to 3 times capacitance is 220 times 10 to the negative 9 farad. So here, same to 200 ohm plus ohm, ohm minus, sorry, minus J, and this will be just ohm, right? And how much is it, this value? Calculator. Mm. 기준 얼마 나오냐? 응? 응? 응. 용안 얼마 나옵니까? 하고 있습니까? <웃음> 얼마 나오나요? 763? 23? 7 to 3 ohm? 다 똑같이 나오니? Everyone has the similar value? Okay, then let's measure it. Uh, so I brought this uh, LCI meter. Uh, I have uh, one capacitor that's the same with the value that this one is, has the capacitance of 220 nanofarad and this one capacitance and this has the uh, resistor resistance of 2.2 kilo ohm and I connect it in parallel right and then we we'll measure it what is it the admittance first 가까이 와도 됩니다 보이니? 안 보이니까? 이렇게 보여줄 수 있는 뭐가 없다 여기서 보면 어, G는 488. So G, it tells the uh, G value as 490, 490 microcellum. And the B value as 137, 1.38 millicellum. 어, 뭔가 다르다. 저기 잘못됐네. So we are one order of magnitude out of it. So here I think we should correct it. This has to be zero. It needs to have a one more zero, right? So then 1.38 millicellum, and that's pretty much close to the real value, the, the measured value. So here again, and one kilohertz, 490, and we have a 450, and uh, 1.38 and 1.38 that's exactly the same so and this will change with the frequency because there you have omega in the equation right so i think in this case it's going to increase with the frequency let's say let's do that um, let me change it to 10 kilohertz measurement value Ten kilohertz. And then, two. Now it's a twelve point three millicellum. So it's uh, ten times before that, right? Because the omega is now ten times than before that, right? So be before it was a one kilohertz. Now it's a ten kilohertz. So it's a by factor of ten. So now it has increased by tech factor of ten, right? Twelve point something millicellum. Right? So then. 
uh, let's do the series connection. You, 안 맞을 거야 아마. In series. We have a one resistor and one capacitor. <coughs> And let me change it to R and X. So we calculated the R and X. Measurement format more R X and the frequency decrease it to one third and R and here. So I just did it. And it says the R is 2.2 kilo ohm and the X is minus 760, 750. Right? So, pretty much close to the uh, X value, right? minus 2723. Right? So, here, uh, what is the uh, frequency dependent? Mm, I think it's uh, because of the heat. Could be. I don't know. And if we change the frequency, it's going to decrease too, right? So as we increase the frequency, then it's now the one order of magnitude reduced, right? It's now 73. Right? So by that, from these two values, then you can calculate the uh, permittivity value right, of the material. Question. 신기하죠? <laughs> 안 신기할 수도 있는데. It's good, right? Fun. Uh, so there was the low frequency measurement and the high frequency. So this has done, we have done it in kilohertz frequency, right? The 10 kilohertz, maybe 100 kilohertz and maximum. And we can go, uh, down to maybe hertz, several tens of hertz and the several hertz. Right? That's a range of the low frequency measurement. And then in the case of high frequency, we can go up to like gigahertz, several gigahertz. Uh, we're gonna do that in uh, next class. And there's a source of errors. And first is the electrode polarization. Because um, you have a one electrode that's made of metal made of metal and another electrode and here you have a soil and because it's a wet soil and this may be made of uh, copper or stainless steel or aluminum then you can have there's gonna be a, a charge exchange from here to the metal so at the interface between the soil and the electrode there's a charge accumulation because of the impedance difference and the here, you uh, actually there's an electron going and out through the electrode, but you have an ion, for example, calcium or the or the sodium or chloride ion that's accepting the uh, electrons because of the difference in the mechanism in the charge transfer. Uh, it's a uh, very likely or unavo unavoidable to have the electrode polarization. But this caused a significant error in the measurement, so we need to avoid it as much as possible. And also the, there could be a redox reaction. So this metal can be oxidized, and the other side there could be some precipitation of the mineral, and this will also act as a you know, measurement error. Uh, so the eliminating or the minimizing the electrode polarization Measurements at two different specimen lengths, insulating a layer or substitution technique has been suggested in previous studies. But uh, in reality, when you want to implement this method, it's not, you find it's not very like accurate or it's not very efficient. So, and the non-reactive blocking electrode, like a very stable metal, like gold and silver or pl platinum, eliminates the frequency-dependent electrochemical effects. So it doesn't 
uh, caused the redox and oxidation reaction, but the, but still you may have the electrode polarization effect. Uh, and these two cause the computed real permittivity value to increase as the frequency decreases, but the effective permittivity is minimally affected until the low frequencies. And the other error is the direct contact between mental and electrode, and there could be some chemical reaction. And also you may have some air bubble or the air gap at the between uh, between the specimen and the electrode. In this case, the charge can stored at this air bubble so that this will act as a capacitor, additional capacitor. So this is an, uh, another source of error. And if you, have, if you don't have like a perfectly insulated system, then you may have a leakage of the current flow. So, for example, if there's a water, for example, let's say that you have a specimen submerged in water, then the current can flow to the water and it may go to the uh, other top through the water, not, not through the soil. So then that's another source of error. Mm. Calibration part, I think we've done that before. Uh, just before the, you have a resistance and the inductance cable value, and uh, also the in parallel you may have a capacitor and the resistor. So then you need to take uh, find out these value each, and then take that out from the measurement value. Uh, the limiting frequency is the minimum frequency at which electro polarization does not significantly affect the real permittivity value. So here, for example, this is the limiting frequency. So at here, that's fine, right? This value is uh, reliable, but below then this limiting frequency is too high, right? You can see that there is a 10 to the 7. The real permittivity cannot be uh, this high. It's going to be like in the order of the several hundred, or it could be less than that because the water value is 80. And uh, uh, so the, you need to find out this uh, limited frequency and uh, obtain the realistic value. Mm -hmm. Then the, another method for low frequency measurement is the four terminal electrode measurement. So actually in this case, instead of using just two electrodes, you can use the four electrode. And you can, you can find out that there's a LC and the LP and HP and the HC. So the, every LCR meter or impedance analyzer have four terminal. And you use the two terminal that uh, HC and the H, uh, LC to generate the current. So in this case, you have a current generating electrode. So between this, you have a uniform electric field and uniform current flow and you put another two electrodes to measure the potential difference in uh, between these two electrodes. So here you have a potential difference and this and this from here to here you have a current flowing. And here they put another reference register and the measuring the current Right, determine the I, and using this I, if you measure the voltage, the potential difference, then you can calculate the impedance between these two electrodes. Okay. So that's uh, how you eliminate the electropolarization effect. So in this case, the uh, uh, current generating electrode is separate, and you have a potential measurement if, um, Electrode. So in this potential measurement electrode, you don't have any electropolarization effect. Right? The electropolarization effect only occurs at the uh, um, current generating, or the charge is produced, uh, the electrode that produces the charge movement. Right? So uh, four-terminal electrode measurement is more 
uh, accurate and they have many advantages in terms of the measurement but uh, uh, in soil mechanics or the, in geophysics it's not easy to put the four electrodes in the soil specimen right so because uh, if you imagine that you implement this measurement system to uh, track your test that you need to insert another two electrodes into the membrane right? so then it's going to be a little bit difficult to implement and the, you know, how to seal the leakage then that's going to be a, another problem for implementation but uh, uh, potential drop between two points within the specimen away from the charge transfer occurring at the current electrode so this is uh, obviously really good advantages so it generates the uh, more credible measurement than the two terminal configuration